still okay it's good hi my name is Michaela Ikes and I'm going to be a first year student this fall at St. John Fisher College joining me today is Fisher alumna Mary Peeler from the class of 1979 this fall not only marks my first year as a student at Fisher but it marks the 50th anniversary of the first female students enrolled at the college. A lot has changed in 50 years, not just on campus, but in our society as well. Today, Mary and I will have a look at Fisher then and now. Thank you for joining me today, Mary. I am Thanks, very, Michaela. Mm -hmm. I am very excited to learn more about your Fisher experience. First off, can you please tell me how you found St. John Fisher College and what made you apply? Okay, well, that's actually a funny story because I had applied to Nazareth, mm -hmm. which is right down the road. Mm -hmm. I'm not originally from Rochester, so I had never been here before. Mm -hmm. And on my first trip up to tour Nazareth, um, my sister and I inadvertently turned into Fisher, thinking it was Nazareth, <laughs> and went in and told them that we had an appointment. And they assured me that I did not have an appointment for a campus tour that day. Mm -hmm. But if I came back at four o'clock, they could accommodate me. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of this conversation, we noticed um, a college catalog on the counter that said St. John Fisher and realized we were at the wrong place. <laughs> so we promptly left, went to Nazareth, took the tour. And um, I wasn't overly excited about what I saw on the tour, you know, 45, 50 years ago, Nazareth looked very different than it looks today. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go back and take the Fisher tour. And um, on the tour, they told me about their business program and their accounting program, which was initially what I was interested in mm -hmm. um, and was going to major in either business accounting and secondary education to be a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. So very impressed with the tour very impressed with the personalization and the people that I met along the way. So I made an appointment for a follow-on, more detailed discussion a couple weeks later and ended up choosing Fisher. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> kind of funny when you think yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was your first year experience like? So did you live on campus? Um, what types of classes did you take? Um, what clubs or organizations were you were you involved in? What student life looked like then? Okay, well, um, I had a great experience. I did live on campus. Mm -hmm. I lived on campus all four years, and I actually lived with the same roommate all four years. Oh, wow. So I think that added to the positiveness of my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, type of classes you took freshman year back then were mainly requirements, you know, English, uh, Math 101, science, very basic classes. Mm -hmm. um, so the academic part was good and it was a prep for really your major. You know, you're taking basic accounting and, and that sort of thing. Um, but my on-campus experience was very different than today, not in a good or a bad way, but, you know, Fisher had only recently admitted women. Mm -hmm. So there were only 100 or 150 women on campus. So the only dorm that had women was Ward Hall, and it had three floors. Ward mm -hmm. two, three, and four were women, and Ward five was men. Wow. So yeah, much smaller crowd. So I, you know, I think that was the first biggest difference. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't we didn't notice it. We didn't feel any different because there were less of us. It was very inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. um, there were only two cafeterias, mm -hmm. uh, Haffey and Ward. And Ward was kind of known as the quiet cafeteria mm -hmm. where kids went if they wanted to read while they were eating or, you know, it was just a quieter tone than Haffey. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, basically you got three meals a day. Hardly anyone ate breakfast because people were just getting up in order to go to class, not going downstairs for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, all of that was a very positive experience for me. Mm -hmm. And in retro, I don't think I realized it at the time, but in retrospect, the teachers all knew us. Mm -hmm. I mean, they took the time to know the students individually. And I only noticed that as a difference in contrast to high school friends of mine that went to larger institutions. 
Mm -hmm. where they were in classes with 100 or 200 people in an auditorium. Mm -hmm. And some semesters actually never met the teacher. Fisher mm -hmm. wasn't like that then. And that's one of the things that they've retained through the years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm on the board of trustees and I, I know a good amount of teachers, even though they weren't there when I was there. So oh. it's a very engaging faculty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's that's very helpful. It makes you feel like if you need help, you're not afraid to put your hand up and, and say that. Mm -hmm. So um, I found that to be true from freshman year, you know, all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on that question? Um, no, I think that's, I think you uh, covered it all. That's great. Um, did you have a favorite faculty member? And if so, who was it and why? Um, I, I had some faculty members that through the years and even post Fisher, mm -hmm. I kept relationships with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the most significant to me on that were, were two priests that also taught at that time. Mm -hmm. But one priest in particular, Father Dorsey, was my English teacher mm -hmm. and um, really went out of his way not to know the kids just academically, but he socialized with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we were going some, he would ask us on Friday, you know, what are you kids doing this weekend? And we would tell him mm -hmm. and he would show up sometimes. <laughs> and he really enjoyed the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a legacy Fisher person and very much part of the Fisher culture and establishing it that exists today. Mm -hmm. But I remember I was probably out of college five or six years when I got engaged to my now husband mm -hmm. and um, ran into Father Dorsey on a golf course. Mm -hmm. And he rode his golf course over to me and said, hey, I heard you're marrying, you know, John Peeler. And mm -hmm. I said, yes. And he said, that's a good thing. And I expect to be there. Oh, wow. And they really, yeah, very mm -hmm. engaging, you know, good teacher. But as you know, at that point, you find some teachers that you communicate better with, some are better at helping you understand the information. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it comes down to who you got a comfort level with. Mm -hmm. And because the classes are smaller, it's easy to establish that at Fisher. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm really looking forward to too is the small class size and getting to not only know like um, the other classmates who are in my class, but the professor like one-on-one -on -one, because I really like that connection, being able to know not only what they're teaching, but just them outside of the classroom as well. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you will find that there, I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your favorite spot on campus? My favorite spot on campus was a place called the Campus Club, mm -hmm. which was formerly in the basement of Kearney. Don't know if you've ever heard of that before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Times were very different back then, and a lot of colleges had uh, social clubs on campus. So mm -hmm. we would have, you know, bands one or two nights a week, uh, different specials every night. And it was a place where kids could go after, after the library. I mean, it didn't open till like nine o'clock, I'm going to say. So, you know, kids would study and then they would go over to the campus club and you had a place to socialize because back then, there, there were no cell phones, so there was no internet, mm -hmm. and very few kids had TVs. And if you had one, there wasn't cable in your room back then. You just had to use antenna. Mm -hmm. So people really didn't hang out in their rooms all night. You know, they were looking for a place to go. And the campus was smaller. There were less dormitories. There were less, you know, there wasn't the area like is in, in Basel now that has the coffee and, and mm -hmm. all that. That didn't exist back then. So everybody pretty much hung out in the campus club if you were on campus. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other place people hung out was um, in the lounges. At the end of each dorm floor, there was a lounge. So if something was on TV that everybody wanted to see, somebody would bring their little portable TV into the lounge and set it up so that everyone could go in there and watch. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, you know, those are the times that I remember where we were just spending time together. Again, no cell phones, no internet. Mm -hmm. So a pay phone in the hall, literally a pay phone. Oh, wow. And you, you could get a phone in your room, which became more commonplace around junior year. Mm 
people started to get phones in their room. But otherwise, you know, you would hear somebody holler out from the hall, uh, hey, Mary, your mother's on the phone. <laughs> You'd go down and take the pay phone call. So different level of socialization because the times were so different than they are today. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I noticed with students today is um, you have to almost be conscious to engage because mm -hmm. it's very easy to sit in your room on your phone all night, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You got all your high school friends, you got your neighborhood friends, mm -hmm. and they're all in different places. So you're saying, hey, I was at school all day, I can catch up with people all night. Mm -hmm. But you really miss a whole social element of mm -hmm. what living on campus means when you do that. So mm -hmm. you don't want to disband your friends, but you want to get as much out of the experience as you can. So yeah. I think those were my favorite places. Um, we really had all of our classes either in Basel or in Kearney. There, there were really no other places where classes were offered other than I think there was a science lab and that was it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like how you were saying how you were able to, you know, either meet in the lounges or um, what, what were you saying, like the campus club or whatever that was, yeah. 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 Um, but I think that's great. and. I know for me, I'm I'm really um, hoping that, you know, um, specifically like freshmen and people in college, like they're not so, you know, like wrapped up in their phone and stuff, because I'm really looking to socialize and get to know people, um, you know, on a personal level without, um, you know, having, right. you know, people focusing on their phones and stuff. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of the students that are there now, or I know a good number of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they've had to make a conscious effort because it's a habit now, right? Yeah. You're probably on your phone all the time, you know, yeah. you're uh -huh. so, yeah, it's a, it's making a conscious effort. But I would say one of the other memories I have is that um, two of the girls that lived across the hall from me freshman year, mm -hmm. they were sophomores a year ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Both of them were from Rochester, but lived on campus. Mm -hmm. And they would invite me to their house for dinner once in a while on a Sunday or on a Tuesday night. And oh. I got to know their families. And that was nice. And you have that advantage being from Rochester, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I remember that. And I, re as a matter of fact, I'm going to lunch with one of the girls on Friday who oh, used wow. to do that. Yeah. That's and, awesome. you know, we've stayed in touch. She came to my house a couple of times on the weekend when I was going home. Mm -hmm. and it, it just kind of breaks the ice because you feel like you're becoming part of something and really meeting people. Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of your high school friends, you probably know their parents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people socialize. So my family appreciated that someone was you know, looking after me occasionally, mm -hmm. and their parents appreciated that they got an opportunity to come to my house for the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, on the summer or on a, you know, Columbus Day break or something, mm -hmm. I would say, hey, why don't you just come to my house and do it. So that's a, that was a nice personal touch. And again, mm -hmm. I don't know if you get that at a really large campus either. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I definitely, um, want to bring, like you said, like people home, because I think that that'll help build connections and make them feel more comfortable if they're out of the area, or even if they are in the area, just to meet, you know, other people who right. support and like care about them. So, right. Mm -hmm. um, can you summarize Fisher then in three words? You know, for me personally, it was the best experience ever. I um I wasn't nervous about mm -hmm. going away to college. I felt confident enough that I was mature enough, you know, to manage the whole situation. Mm -hmm. But I never expected that it would be so good that it would go so fast. Mm -hmm. And that the relationships that I made there even outside of my, you know, close inner circle, I never imagined that they would matter later. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just never thought about it. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm out of college a long time now. We've we've passed our 40th uh, reunion mm -hmm. and things happen through the years. I mean, I was in the unfortunate situation where my roommate, who I had lived with for four years, passed away. And mm -hmm. I was shocked at the number of Fisher people that I'm not really in touch with anymore that mm -hmm. reached out to me. 
and, you know, had seen it in the alumni news and said, oh, I saw that, you know, I can't imagine what that must be like for you to know. So, it, and, and I've been in business for the past 40 years in the technology industry, mm-hmm. which can be a pretty nerdy industry. <laughs> um, and it's amazing to me how many customers and people I've met that I either recognize or they recognize me from being a Fisher alum, or mm-hmm. it flushes out in conversation mm-hmm. and it just changes the tone. Mm-hmm. Everybody very engaging. I never knew that that would matter. That was just not a consideration for me when I was younger, but mm-hmm. it's been a huge asset to me in my life. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, just the interactions I've had um, with people just on campus already, and I don't even go there, have been awesome. So definitely the people um, that I've met, and you know that has really um, led me to choose Fisher for the next four years. So I am beyond excited for the fall. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you were on campus and how would you summarize Fisher now in three words? Um, Well, COVID has obviously changed a lot. So Mm -hmm. I am on the board of trustees and we usually meet on campus, Mm -hmm. but we have not done that for the past 18 months due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So physically, I was really only on campus one time Uh, And it was for the funeral of uh, a priest named Father Travato, who was my college advisor. So Mm -hmm. Dr. Rooney was kind enough to invite me to -hmm. join a small group of people that um, participated in his service. Mm -hmm. But normally I am on campus, I would say uh, at least 10 times, if not 15 times a year for Mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've participated through the years with career services. Um, Obviously, in the summer, we've had the Buffalo Bills camp. So Mm -hmm. I'm on campus a lot for that. Mm -hmm. So um, frequently in normal times is the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I hopefully, um, you know, one of these times when you're on campus, I'll be able to meet you in person. I will definitely meet you in person. I'll even buy you lunch sometime if you're free for class or on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, but I definitely will meet up with you personally. Perfect. That'd be awesome. Lastly, do you have any advice for me as I start my Fisher journey? You know, what I would tell you is to go all in Mm -hmm. and embrace the whole experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about the phone thing and socializing, but Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you choose as a major, whether it's a four-year program or a five-year program, Mm -hmm. I would just encourage you to, you know, not only keep up with academia, but to be interested in it, you Mm -hmm. know? And if you're not interested in it, that's a red flag, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a small enough school that if you're interested, there will be things that you can get involved with along the way. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, academia obviously is why you go to college to get a degree. Mm -hmm. But knowing that you're in a field that you can get a job in, knowing that you've also developed um, your social skills, which obviously you sound like you have, but you're going to meet a lot of people, a lot of different people, Mm -hmm. some you like, some you don't like. It's Mm -hmm. all part of the experience. And Mm -hmm. it's all part of a real world experience when you get out. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage you to really embrace the whole four years. Mm -hmm. I've seen some people that go two years And then they just kind of disconnect and they're just there to get your degree. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go four years, you have so many more people to engage with because Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're not the freshman and you're not the sophomore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's new people coming in that Mm -hmm. will very much be in your lifetime circle Mm -hmm. as you leave. Mm -hmm. And I think Fisher has really, um, it's obviously grown so much, right? I mean, the Mm -hmm. campus and Um, there's probably many things available there that I don't even know about today. I see new things all the time when I'm there. So, um, you know, I think for students, just really experiencing and understanding all of the resources that are at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think you can have just a great experience there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the advice. I know um, that's why also I am living on campus because I think that being on campus you get the whole you know feel and you're able to 
just meet as many people, build connections that, like you said, will, um, you know, serve you a lifetime. So I'm very excited. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Mary. I really enjoyed learning about your Fisher experience and gaining insight on what Fisher was like then and look at what Fisher could be like for me as I begin there this fall. I'm sure everyone who watches this video will enjoy your message. Thank you again for giving back to the Fisher community and I look forward to meeting you soon Great. in the future. And you're part of the next decade of women mm -hmm. that will be going to Fisher. So I think Fisher now has a higher percentage of women attendees than men, yes. which is unbelievable yes. compared to, to mm -hmm. what it was. But yeah. it's wonderful and it's a great experience. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I Thank you. That.